Hello everybody and welcome back to this video and right now let's talk about the SQL injection. Now the SQL injection it is one of the most common attacks on websites. It is an attack for backend database in order to access information that was, that was not intended to be displayed by the actual website. So right now I'm going to talk about some of the basics of SQL injection and I'm going to write it inside the leaf pad so you can see everything better. So the SQL injection attack on database. So let's just define it like that, simple as that. So uh, this information that we actually try to extract using SQL injection can be private information such as, for example, sensitive company data, email list, password list, and similar. So with SQL injection, we are extracting private data. And let's specify, for example, emails, passwords, and so on and so on. Doesn't even matter. The passwords is enough for it to be a serious vulnerability. So, for example, let's say you attack a big website with a big actual database, and you try and you manage to actually extract all of the passwords for every account on that website. Well, then you created a serious vulnerability and a serious threat to that actual company or website that you actually attacked because now you have the usernames and passwords for every account on that website. So now you imagine that that website, for example, is something like PayPal and you get the point why this can be a serious vulnerability. Now, to perform an actual SQL injection, we first of all need to find, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to find an input within the actual web application that is included inside of an SQL query. In order for input to be vulnerable, the website needs to be, uh, or the website actually needs to directly include the input we gave it within that SQL statement. The attacker can then run the SQL code and search through the database and gather private information. Now, the, the input can be something like, for example, login form. So once you type in username and password, then the actual website performs an SQL query to find in the database whether a password that you inputted really exists. And when it actually checks whether that password exists, it returns your actual information that you have behind that specific account that you try to log in with. That is the first thing. The second thing is try to actually send an SQL statement and see whether it is vulnerable. And if you find out that it's vulnerable, you can simply just perform the exploitation or or querying the database. Now, these are just basic steps. Now, we are going to cover all of them in the next video when we are actually going to perform the manual SQL injection. The reason why we are performing manual is because that is the best way that you can learn how this attack works and what you can do with it. Because if you simply just use some tools that actually automate this process, it will most likely, first of all, not work with the tool. And second of all, you will not have any idea what you are doing and how the attack works. There, therefore, it is the best practice that you actually learn the manual SQL injection and then after it you can use any tool you want as you will know how the actual program, pardon me, how the actual uh, attack works. Can be, and now first of all it can be get based, it can also be post based, it can be header based, and it can be cookie based. So these are all the parameters that you can actually try to exploit with the SQL injection. The get and post base can be used through some sign up and login forms, while the header based SQL injection can be used in the header parameters, such as, for example, let's say user agent, uh, location, host, and so on and so on. These are all the header parameters that you can actually use to exploit the SQL injection. And the cookie based, you actually have to find the cookie within the packet and use SQL injection in one of its parameters. What I mean by header based and cookie based parameters, even though you already probably know, but we can simply just check out one simple packet using our burp suit. Since we installed it as a proxy, you simply just set it to be manual proxy configuration, okay. And right now let's start the burp suit right here. Make sure that you set in the preferences that the burp suit is the proxy between you and the website. So right now we can capture different packets. I will click here on close, next, and then start start burp suit. Now, 
on our Firefox, as soon as this opens up, we're going to visit some random website and see what type of parameters header has. So we will see it right here. Let me just go and search for facebook.com. Here we know that the intercept is on. That's why we're going to click it to be off. Here is the HTTP history of what we actually visited. The Facebook page has loaded. Now, if I go all the way down, you can see here is the actual request or post method request to the actual page. And we can see here is the here are the headers. So we can see the user agent that can be used to exploit SQL injection. The host can be used to exploit SQL injection and all of this. And we can also see the cookie parameter right here. As we said, the cookie parameter can also be vulnerable. And you will have to find this, for example, cookie within the packet and use SQL injection in one of its parameters. As we can see, it has multiple parameters. I just want to show you that now we can close this because we don't really need it anymore. We can set our preferences back to normal because we are not using proxy anymore. If you want, if you don't want, you can simply just leave it uh, with burp suit on. And now let's discuss how we can actually check whether there is an SQL injection vulnerability. For, well, for example, the most simple check for an SQL injection would be to input a single quote. Now, I will explain later on why a single quote or I can just simply just explain it right now. Well, simply because the query you are inputting is already in between two single quotes that define it. If you put a third single quote there, it will get confused and it will throw out an error. So for example, let's say you are asked for a username. Okay. So in a login form, for example, there is an input and you need to input a username. The actual SQL query would look something like this. It will do some SQL query and I will show you. Let's just type SQL quote and then SQL code goes here and then the actual username gets stored in between the single quotes in the actual code of that web page. And we will discuss the SQL code in just a second. But for now on, let's just discuss this. And let's say, for example, for a username, you type in Tom. So the Tom will be stored between these two single quotes in the actual code. But if you simply just type in single quote, now you have a problem because you actually have three single quotes right here. And only two are defined as a beginning and the end point of the actual statement. So therefore, this one will be the beginning, this one will be the end. And then you have this hanging single quote, which simply just doesn't do anything. Therefore, it will throw out an error if the filtered, if the actual input is not filtered enough and if there is an actual SQL injection. Now, before we deal with any type of SQL injection attack, we first need to know what the SQL is. So the SQL is simply a structured query language. It is a standard language for accessing and, and uh, manipulating databases. Some of the things that we can actually do with the SQL, we can, for example, uh, execute different queries insert, update and delete records, create new databases, new tables, for example, uh, set permissions on tables, and many other things. So these are just some of the things that we can do with this programming language, if you want to call it like that, or with the structured query language. Now let's see an actual example of SQL query. Let's imagine that we actually have some login form where we are asked to actually input a username and a password. And once you input both of them, the web application will query a database for your username. Now the query for that would actually look something like this. So the, it would be named, for example, SQL query, oops, SQL query. It would be equal to something like this. So select star and I will explain just now. Just let me finish this statement and I will explain what everything here means. So select star from users where username equals and then close the double quote plus username. This is the actual SQL query that you're looking right here. And what this means is select and this star right here actually represents select everything from the table called users where the actual username is equal to the username that you specified in the login form. So this is an actual SQL query and it would look something like this. 
this select simply statement selects from the user's table so it is searching in this table because the database can have multiple tables therefore we need to specify from which table we are searching for so we are searching from the user's table where the actual username is specified to be equal and then the actual uh, username that we specified in the login form so something like this Bill, uh, above that would be something like username equals and then get an input from user and then we simply specify Tom and then right here it will set plus Tom and in the users table it will search for the username Tom it can be the same with password so for example instead of being username we can have plus password right here but then we wouldn't really search for the uh, users table we will search for the passwords table and where password equals password and right here it would be password instead of username so you get the simple point this is how a simple sql query looks like okay now if you want to actually learn more about the sql and understand this attack better you can search some of the basic sql commands of google and see what some of them do as we will use them let me just show you where you can actually do that so i will just go to my firefox real quick you can simply just search in your google chrome or whatever search engine you're using you simply search basic sql commands press here enter and it will lead you you can simply just click on the first page i believe and it will have some of the commands explained what they do and how they are used in sql language so let's go list of sql commands on the code academy and we can see some of the commands alter table and as avg between case count create table delete group by having inner join let's see whether there are some of the more t most important ones here is the select which i explained uh, the update where we're going to use that in the next video so these are some of the commands here you can see selects everything from customers try it yourself let's try some sql command ourselves edit the sql statement and click run sql to see the result let's just click run sql and let's see the actual output and this output would simply just be the output for this actual command right here uh, to the database that outputted this as a result so what this statement says is select everything from customers and now the customers table has this right here therefore it selected all of the customers right here as we can see there is a lot of them now you can actually play with this and try some other different sql statements but we are not going to do that right now i'm searching for the actual basic commands here is the actual website where you have some of the important commands update delete drop order by between and join and so on union is also something that we are going to use concat create view so these are some of the basic commands you can take a look at them see what they do and see some of the other commands as well uh, if you're interested in sql and in the next video we will perform an advanced manual sql injection exploitation so hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i hope i will see you in the next one bye